section, the next section that we have for chapter four is called the Cauchy-Euler equation. And a Cauchy, Cauchy, Euler equation is a differential equation that has a certain form. It's very close to, it's a higher order differential equation, uh, non-homogeneous. And we, we don't exactly have constant coefficients, but we do have the coefficients of the, of the y variables uh, to be matching powers of x, matching the, the, the degree of the, of the derivative. So, for example, a second order Cauchy equation would be uh, x squared d squared y dx squared plus um, 2 x dy dx plus 1 is equal to, and now another function here like maybe e to the x or something. So this would be an example of a, a Cauchy uh, Euler equation. <clears throat> so like I said, it, it's very close to what we've been solving for, except we have uh, the, the x powers. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm missing a y somewhere. I'm missing a y here. So if you have something of this form, we can, uh, the approach is, we could probably guess it's going to be similar to what we've been doing, where we have to find uh, the, the solutions to the homogeneous equation and then find the particular solution for this uh, non-homogeneous. <coughs> Okay, let's uh, let's take a look at how to deal with this. So we're we're basically going to deal with it pretty close to the same way we've been dealing with it. And then uh, you know how last time we kind of when we had just plain constant coefficient, we just say, let's assume that y equals x to the m is a solution, and then we try to work it out. Uh, it turns out that we could do the same thing for this, right? If we assume that y is equal to x to the m is a solution to this, uh, we could try to solve uh, the, 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 non -ho the homogeneous portion of it. Actually, uh, let's, I want to copy this over to the next page. And let's let's test it out. Actually, let's try it on this one. So let's use the example that I wrote down on the previous page, where we have um, what was the example again? It was like uh, x squared. I just use the y double prime business. Uh, what is it? Plus 2x y prime plus y is equal to e to the x. So let's assume that this is equal to 0 first, and then let's try to solve for it. So the auxiliary, well, actually, before we do it that way, let's, let's actually look at the homogeneous counterpart, x squared y double prime plus 2x y prime plus y equal to 0. And we'll assume that y equals x to the m is a solution. Now, we've done this before, right? 
we dealt with this before. Uh, <clears throat> except the only trouble is that we got some other stuff going on here, some x's. So let's let's go through this and see what kind of auxiliary equation we're going to get. Uh, we need y. We need y double y prime and y double prime. So you remember seeing this stuff? And then we plug it into the equation. Except now, this time when we plug into the equation, we get x squared happening there too, and, and 2x and all that. So let's see what happens here. Uh, when we plug this in, we get uh, x squared, and then you have m, m minus 1, x to the m minus 2, plus 2x. And then y prime is m x to the m minus 1 plus y, which is just x to the m is equal to 0. Can we combine the x's? Suppose we can, right? x to the m, and they're all going to be x to the m if we combine them all. Is that right? x to the m, x to the m, and x to the m. So let's factor out an x to the m. And what are we going to have left here? We got m, m minus 1, plus 2, m plus 1 is equal to 0. <coughs> So let's see. Get some m's here, right? m squared minus m plus 2m plus 1. What's this turn out to be? m squared plus m? Minus m? Uh, oh, I don't know if this is the one I wanted to do. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> no, well, let's let's go. Let's roll with it. So uh, this thing was supposed to be set equal to 0. x to the m is your function, assuming that your function is not all 0. We can take that out and just focus on this stuff in the brackets, which leaves us with this polynomial. And so m is equal to what here? <coughs> yeah, the x to the m is assume it's non-zero. So the only way the two things equal to 0 is that if one of them is equal to 0. so. I'll set that one equal to zero. So if you use a quadratic formula, you're going to get some. This is this this is uh, imaginary. All right, it's imaginary. I think it's uh, one half plus and minus i root three over two. Is that what you guys got? Better double check that, make sure it's right. Yeah. Okay. So we have complex conjugates for our solutions. And so negative one half. So if you write this back as uh, y is equal to x to the negative 1 half plus i root 3 over 2, um, we didn't really 
we don't know any ways to deal with this uh, this this business in solving for um, uh, <coughs> a complex power for uh, for x. Now, if it was e to the something times x, we got a way to deal with that. But this is a little bit different. Yeah, I didn't I didn't want to do it this way. <laughs> so, so this is. This is our first attempt in taking a look at this this uh, this type of problem. Maybe I should have picked a, a better problem, but let's let's take a look at to see what we're supposed to do. jumped on case three. So it turns out that if we have a, a complex conjugate for our roots for our uh, equation, uh, this could be broken up uh, this way where we, I, so there was no, there was no way to, to find out um, the value for x to the, x to a complex number. But we do know, we do have some information about this when this is a, uh, a power of e, e to the complex number times x. So if we just break this up into um, the plus and minus, and actually the plus and minus, you know how we got rid of the plus and minus? We probably didn't do that all mathematically and stuff. We just say, oh, we just get rid of the plus and minus. We'll do the same thing. X to the one half x times x to the root three over two, and this is still imaginary. And so the way to to work around here is to to treat this or to raise this as e to the ln of that power, and that's that's what they do over here. Um, so we know that if we have anything, this is equal to e to the ln of that something, right? And so that's what we'll do. This is e to the ln of x to the three halves times i. Uh, root three halves times i, and then I could take this power and move it out in the front. So I would get x to the negative one half times e to the square root of three over two i ln x. Now this ln x over here can be your your new variable um, if you just make a substitution like it was u or w or something like that then we know that this can be broken up into sines and cosines All right so if we temporarily say that this is equal to u then we have e to the three halves or root three over two i times u and then we know that because of the the Euler's formula we know that this is equal to cosine square root of 3 over 2 u plus i sine root 3 over 2 u So this becomes x to the negative one half times cosine root three over two, and then instead of u, let's put back the ln x. Okay. 
Well, you don't keep the I. That'll be, this will be the two linearly independent solutions that we have, and then we just wipe out the, it gets blended with a C. Um, sine root 3 over 2 ln x. <coughs> So this actually presents us with two um, fundamental solutions, would, which would be enough to, for us to deal with. So then your solutions then, so a general solution is going to be y is equal to uh, x to the negative 1 half times cosine root 3 over 2 times ln x. And let's multiply this by c1. And then we have the x to the negative 1 half sine root 3 over 2 times ln x. And then multiply this by c2. So two fundamental solutions multiplied by constants. Now we have a general solution to the homogeneous part of the differential equation. That's not what? Okay. Yeah, this is only the first half. We still have to deal with the G. Um, so, should we do another example of the homogeneous part, and then, or should we try to finish this with a? This is still not a. <laughs> this is a crazy example. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, now that we have a solution to the the general equation or the homogeneous equation, <coughs> we we have to find a solution to the particular equation. So let's let's continue on with our example. Let me rewrite our example again. Uh, x squared y double prime plus 2xy prime plus y u of x. So the variation of parameters allows us to come up with uh, an equation that actually allows us to come up with a more general way to approach things instead of just uh, constant coefficients like we've had. So uh, what we're going to do <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to attempt to uh, do the variation of parameters. If you remember the variation of parameters, you have to know the your y1 and y2. So let's label our y1 uh, is equal to x to the negative one half uh, cosine root three over two ln of x. And then your y2 is equal to the same thing. So for this, we need to come up with a particular solution. And our particular solution um, has something to do with some u's and some Ronskins and stuff like that. Uh, so the end game is that your y particular solution is going to be um, u1 times y1 plus u2 times y2. And to find u1, we need to first find u1 prime. And to find u1 prime, we need to find the Ronskins. Mm. Yeah. 
I'm wondering when I'm going to bail on this example. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Things might cancel out. Uh, what if what if we uh, temporarily leave this and do a simpler example, and then we'll come back to this if we have time. All right, let's do another example. Yeah, that's what I'm going to shoot for. <coughs> um, is this imaginary? Yeah. Well, they're, they're all zeros. Oh, maybe we could pick up one of them and then. Now, yeah, let's see. Two, five. Uh, one minus one. It's x squared minus x plus one. Is that? No. Oh, let's pick. Uh, let's just make one up. <laughs> this is going to be bad. Um, x squared y double prime. So let's have two distinct roots. So uh, let's do a minus x y prime minus two. Why? Will that have distinct roots? No, we have to do that M business because <laughs> it has to. It doesn't just. You don't just take the coefficients for this one. It's a little bit trickier. No. All right. I'm sorry. Let's actually pick an example from the book. Well, you can read one of the examples. Let's do number twenty-one. Oh, I hope this works. <coughs> so first you identify that this is in fact a uh, Cauchy-Euler um, equation, differential equation. And you can tell because you have x's raised to powers that match up with the degree of the derivative for each of those terms. And then we'll assume that x of the m is a solution. And um, we find the first and second derivatives. And after you do this several times, um, you might be able to tell from the original equation what your auxiliary equation is going to be. So your auxiliary equation isn't going to be 1 minus uh, or x squared minus x plus 1 like, like the other ones because uh, when, you, when you work out this, this um, when you plug in all these values here, you're going to get something a little bit different. So let's be careful about that. And for the first term, I have uh, x squared, and then we have m, m minus 1, x to the m minus 2. For the second term, I have uh, minus x times y prime, which is m, x to the m minus 1. And then for the last term, I have x to the m, and that's equal to... Let's set it equal to zero because we're going to need to find the homogeneous part. And again, because this is always going to happen, we'll probably you'll probably get to see the algorithm that works for this. The auxiliary equation will come out. Um, m m minus one minus m plus one. So if you do this with a general a, b, and c for your coefficients from the beginning, you'll probably figure out uh, uh, your, your, your uh, auxiliary equation a little bit quicker. So this is uh, m squared minus m minus m plus 1. <laughs> I'm going to get complex roots again. <laughs> Did 
Is it? No, because this is a plus, right? Yeah. So it'll be m squared plus 1. That'll give you complex roots again. No. When you, when you add those two m's together, you've got oh, this is 2m. Ah, OK. Oh, excellent. Excellent. OK. So we got m squared minus 2m plus 1 equals 0. So m minus 1 squared. So we got repeated roots. <clears throat> and so your solutions are going to be, um, yeah? thing? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Is that? Is that okay? Okay. Oh, so the x actually it wasn't x squared, it was x to the m. So these, these things get factored out. They're all x to the m. They got factored out. And uh, we're setting this equal to 0. And x to the m is a function that we're looking for, which is not exactly 0. So then the only chance we'll have for anything here to be 0 is when we let this thing with m is equal to 0. So that's what we're going to do is we're going to let these m's equal to 0. Now, the good news is that we have real roots. The bad news is that they're the same. So, yeah, so this has multiplicity too. Now, uh, our, our solution is 1, m is equal to 1. So, our, our first solution is x to the first power. So, that's our first solution. Our second solution would be now before we had e to the something and then we just multiplied it by x and it turned out okay <laughs> so for this one unfortunately you can't just multiply by x because if you multiply by x it'll be x squared uh, which is linearly independent from x but uh, it probably won't work and you can try it yourself like if you I put x squared here and file, try to find if this is a solution, you'll see that it actually is not. So that's not the way to do it. So the way to do it for repeating roots for Cauchy-Euler equations is uh, you multiply it by ln x. Why? You can do the Ronsky and to figure it out and stuff. So. Or, or, or the, what do you call it, the reduction of order. If we have this as a solution, and then you'll find the, by the reduction of order that this is your other root. That would mess it up too, because that's not the appropriate. So uh, I'll just put by reduction of order. then you would come up with this solution. All right, now we have two solutions, and uh, we have a non-zero. Our actual differential equation is non-homogeneous, so we actually want to deal with this. And we'll deal with this by the variation of parameters. So variation of parameters, uh, again, we'll, we'll need to set up uh, a way to find the y particular, where you're going to solve for u1 and u2. <clears throat> um, 
and remember that U1 um, to find U1 we have to first find U1 prime and to find U1 prime we first need to find out what those uh, what those Ronskins are so um, U1 prime is going to equal to Ronskin over another Ronskin so let's find the first Ronskin without the subscript and that's dependent on these two so we have an x an x ln x the derivative of x is 1 the derivative of this is uh, ln x plus 1 whoa is that right the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second x over x is 1 So this will turn out to be um, x ln x plus x. That's the diagonal minus x ln x, which just turns out to be x. So that's nice. All right, now we need to find uh, the Ron skin where, yeah, question? Oh. <sighs> so uh, the G is 2x. Do you remember if 2x goes on top or 0? 0 and then 2x? Okay. And then uh, so for the Ron skin for the first one, uh, we're going to use x ln x and then ln x plus 1. So the, the determinant is going to be 0 minus uh, 2x squared ln x. Uh, the, the g, this g. And we'll eventually get W2, so let's figure it out now since we're on matrix mode. Uh, x and 1 and 0 and 2x. So the determinant of this is just 2x squared. All right, <clears throat> so not a bad function. We've got W1 is going to be minus 2x squared ln x. Divide that by x, we're going to get negative 2x ln x. So that's u1 prime, and then we want to integrate. So I think this is going to be an integration by parts. Let's see, can we do this in our heads? No. Hmm. Um, can you just do it and tell me, or should I actually do it? Uh, okay, so um, U D V business, U is going to be uh, X. I'll leave the negative 2 outside. D V, nope, I need to do that the other way. U is ln x, dv is x, du is going to be 1 over x dx, v is going to be x squared over 2. So negative 2 on the outside, uh, uv, that's uh, x squared over 2 ln x minus the integral of VDU. VDU is just 1 dx. So this becomes negative x squared ln x. Negative negative is a positive. 2, the antiderivative of x, or 1, is x. I think that's right. Oh, the VDU. Oh, man. 
forgot my forgot my uh, VDU. It's uh, x squared over two. I'm trying to skip steps, so it's just x over two. Okay, let's try that again. <laughs> so this is x over two, right? After we cancel, we integrate. That would be x squared over four, multiplied by two, negative one half x. positive one-half x squared, right? Because inside of the integral would just be x and then x squared. We'll, we'll, we won't do the plus c. Whew. Is that right? Oh, man, I hope so. One-fourth. One uh, I took this two, multiplied it. Okay, so that worked. Anything else that could possibly be wrong? Because <laughs> there's probably something wrong here. I figured a class consensus would find my mistakes. All right, I think we found U1. U2 is going to be easier. Oh, I hope so. Yeah. Okay, so U2. U2 prime starts with W2 over W, and W2 is 2x squared, and W is x. So this is just a 2x. And if we integrate that to find U2, it's just going to be x squared. So our particular solution is going to be this big mess over here minus x squared ln x plus one half x squared times y1, oh that's just x to the first power, plus uh, y u2, which is x squared, times y2, which is x ln x. So it'll be x cubed, and then we can, I suppose, we can distribute this also. All right. I think we did it. Our general solution. is going to be equal to C1 times X, that's Y1, plus C2 times uh, X ln X, that's Y2, plus the particular solution, and if we want to distribute everything, and actually we can try to simplify it if we want. Should we simplify it? Yeah. Bx cubed, right? So this is x cubed, and this is x cubed, and they would cancel each other. We agree on that? And then all we have left is this. So whatever we have left, one half uh, x cubed. Boy. I hope that's right. <laughs> what? What does the Wolfram say? X ln squared x. Yeah. Because uh, the but it's showing that W1 is the LOG is the same thing as LN for Wolfram. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the blue one what? So it says that uh, W1 is negative, negative LN squared. 
instead of negative two x squared. So the, 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 the middle on the right. This one? Well, we could do a homework problem and see. Maybe we could check. I suppose we could check this. We still, what number was this? This is 21. Oops. What section is this? Four. This one. <laughs> Probably right. All right. So where would where would this happen? X? Yeah. I don't know. You guys said it was 0 and 2x, right? 0 and g, right? Yeah. So I, I don't think this is wrong. It looks like we need to have an ln x in the, in the u2. We need an L and X in there somewhere. All right, we're going to try to find the solution. I mean, the mistake. There is the rest of the W one and W two. They're not are not correct. The what? We could, I suppose. Oh, I don't know. What do you guys think we should do? <laughs> I don't know if that's yeah. what's the way to do that. And that's how they find W1 and W2. I don't know. Okay. 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 Okay.
So y b Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> so um, I, I had okay. So this this whole Ronskin business and the variation of parameters business business works if <laughs> if you do if you use it correctly. <laughs> so let me uh, let me. Redo this whole part. And what I need to do is I need to take a look at this equation again, the original equation that we had. <clears throat> and to be able to use the Ronskian properly, we need to make sure that it's in um, normal form. Oh, you need to divide by x squared. You need to divide by x squared. So, so here's, the, here's the issue. We got... Um, we use the the um, was that Cauchy Euler equation and the uh, and the appropriate y is equal to m to the or x to the m, so y is equal to x to the m, and then we got m is equal to one with multiplicity two, and so we got two solutions y one is equal to x y two is equal to x ln x. <coughs> Okay, so that's where we left off. That's that's that part's okay. Uh, what we need to do at this point is to write it in normal form to be able to use Ronskian. So it means we have to divide everything by x squared. So we get y double prime minus uh, one over x y prime plus one over x squared y is equal to 2 over x. So the important part to get out of this is our new function, our new g function, which is going to be this thing. Yeah, so the first Ronskin, it didn't, it didn't, make, a, it didn't make a difference. So the first Ronskin is still the same. Uh, we got x, x ln x. And we got one, and what is this? Uh, ln x plus one. And that's equal to x. So that, that was still okay. So the only change now is this business where we have to include this function, this g of x function. So um, to find the first w, the w1, we got zero, and we got two over x, and then we get x ln x and ln x plus 1 and now we're going to get a negative um, 2 ln x yeah uh, that's just part of the formula for the Ronskin this is a 0 and then the w2 is going to be the first column x and 1 and then now we put 0 and 2 over x here. And then this is going to be just 2. <coughs> so u1 prime is going to be negative 2. Um, wait. It's going to be w1 over w which is negative 2 ln x over x. So we have to integrate that. I think we still get to use integration by parts. u1 is going to be, let's put a negative 2 out, ln x over x dx. <coughs> and here we're going to let u equal to ln x. Is that right? 
and then du or dv. Wait, I can just use the substitution. <laughs> Not exact opposites, but um, yeah, something. <laughs> so u is equal to ln x, du is going to be 1 over x, so that's just going to cancel. It's going to be ln x squared. Right? So integral of u du. Um, no, this would just be u, yeah, u squared over 2. <coughs> so, negative ln x squared. Is that good? Now, um, the u2 is going to be w2 over w. And W2 is a constant, and W is just x. And so U2 is the antiderivative of that. And this is going to be 2. And derivative or antiderivative 1 over x? 1 x. All right, so we get our general solution. Let's put a box around our u2 and u1. So our general solution is going to be c1 times uh, x plus c2 times L, oh, x ln x. plus um, minus ln x squared times x plus 2 ln x times x ln x. I suppose that simplifies, yeah? So this is x ln x with a negative. This is 2 x ln x that's positive, so that can simplify. So that's a plus, right? x ln x. Sheesh. Now is this OK? Thanks for looking out, Timor. OK. Still probably could have started with an easier one. Because <laughs> this is repeating roots, and we have repeating roots that gets a little. Liz? Say it again. Yes, if we had if we had this as a higher power, yeah. So it's the ln x, ln x to the first, ln x to the second, ln x to the third. Boy, I should quit now, huh? Um, you want to take a stab at your homework for this section for five minutes? What chap? This is four seven. Yeah. Oh, there's a quiz that's due tonight at midnight. <laughs> what? It was due on Tuesday, but I forgot to announce it. Although I announced it a long time ago. 
Okay, well, it's due at midnight tonight. <laughs> all right, should we do a... Uh, all right, here's a, is this, a, this is the same problem. We just did this problem. All right, let's see if we can do number five real quick. Real quick. So this is a, an actual initial value problem. So we have um, initial conditions to fill out. Uh, the good news is that this is homogeneous, so hopefully we won't have to work too hard. Uh, no Ronsky and stuff, so there's no variation of parameters for this problem. <coughs> and uh, first we make sure that this is a, in fact a Cauchy-Euler equation where we see x squared and then x. The constants outside doesn't matter only thing that matters is that the power matches the degree of the, the derivative. So we need two derivatives. And you know that the m minus 1 and the m minus 2 is all going to get mixed in and you can factor out an x of the m. So. <clears throat> I got x squared m m minus 1 x to the m minus 2 uh, plus 3x times y prime which is m x to the m minus 1 and there is no need for the y set that equal to 0 so the x is will all match up as x to the end that we can factor out. And then what we have left in here is going to be the polynomial that we're going to solve for. So we got m, m minus 1, plus 3m equals 0. So the thing inside the brackets will equal 0, m squared minus m plus 3m. Um, m squared plus 2m. So m is equal to 0 or m is equal to negative 2. So m is equal to 0 will give us a constant or a 1. Um, so x to the 0 is just 1 and then our y2 is going to be x to the negative 2 power. <clears throat> okay. So our general solution is going to be uh, C1 plus C2 x to the negative 2. So now uh, we use these um, we use these initial conditions to to figure out what else we need to to figure out. So for these initial conditions, we need y and we need y prime. So let's find out what y prime is equal to. That's going to be zero minus two c two x to the negative one or negative three. Negative three. So these are our two equations. We plug one in. So if we plug one in, our y should be equal to 0. And if we plug one in here, our y prime should be equal to 6. So one in for x. We get these equations. Uh, this is nice enough. I can, we don't need to use matrices. Uh, C2 is equal to negative 3. And if C2 is negative 3, C1 is equal to 
positive 3. So our final solution, y should equal to uh, 3 minus 3 over x squared. All right, let's hope that's right. Using the graph, graph the solution. Anybody know how this thing might look like? <laughs> yeah. So y1 is 0, the first one. It's, and then y1 prime is positive 6, so uh, the first one. <coughs> Get it? All right, we got something right today. So it's just a little bit of an extension to what you've been doing. You, know, you, you, get, you get really comfortable with a variation of parameters when you get to the non-homogeneous parts. And uh, it has it. So this is another special type of differential equation. Next time we've got another special differential equation that we'll work with. So um, just keep hacking away on the homework. That'll help you with your stuff. <laughs>